Joe Biden lists policy failures as a reason for running for re-election. Left-wing colleges explode with pro-Hamas rallies. Plus, Kamala Harris shows once again that she's not ready for prime time. All that and more. I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13-minute news hour. God bless the United States of America. Okay, friends, welcome to the show. Happy Monday. Hope you had a great weekend. If you're new to the show, thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to start with Joe Biden, because over the weekend, Biden sat down with CBS News for an interview on 60 Minutes, and the interview was just stunning for its complete lack of actual journalism. On top of that, Biden demonstrated once again that he is a political leader of immeasurable weakness who is leading this country from one crisis to another to another. Here's 60 Minutes host Scott Pelley with one classic example. Because of what we're seeing in the Middle East is the threat of terrorism in the United States increased. Yes, I had a meeting this morning with the Homeland Security people, with the FBI, with, for the Situation Room for a better part of an hour to discuss how we make sure that we prevent a lone wolf and or any co- coordinated effort to try to do what was done in synagogues before, do what was done to Jews in the street. It's just a mind-blowing exchange because it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that our risk of a terrorist attack has gone up dramatically since Biden was sworn in. And it has nothing to do with Hamas's terrorist attack against Israel. It has to do with a wide open southern border that Biden refuses to secure. So not only did Pelly do the classic I'll ask you a basic question so you can give a basic answer, just so you'll be saying something. Pelly also completely ignored the obvious follow-ups. Why is the terrorist threat increasing? How many terrorists have gained entry? Does the open southern border make terrorists more likely to come over? Why not just close the border? And on and on and on. Here's another example. Are you asking Israel to establish a humanitarian corridor in that area or get humanitarian supplies? Yes, our team is talking with them about that and uh, whether there could be a safe zone. You would like to see a humanitarian corridor that allows some of the two million Gazans out of the area? Yes. You would like to see humanitarian supplies brought into Gaza? Yes. I use that example to show you how the media can and often does cover for Biden, a man they know is losing it mentally and can't answer detailed questions off the cuff, a skill that is certainly needed in the president of the United States. Instead of probing Biden for policy positions or analysis, Pelley made the pronouncements, which meant Biden only had to say yes or no. It's so dishonest, but the media are doing it every day. And then the topper. Biden was asked if he not just plans but wants to run again for president. Here's the exchange. Are you sure that you want to run again? Yes, because I'm sure. Look, when I ran, I said, the world's at an inflection point. The world's changing, but we have an opportunity to make it. So imagine if we were able to succeed in getting the Middle East put in place where we have normalization of relations. I think we can do that. Imagine what happens if we, in fact, unite all of Europe and Putin is finally put down where he cannot cause the kind of trouble he's been causing. We have enormous opportunities, enormous opportunities to make it a better world. I don't know about you, but if I were former President Trump, I wouldn't need to spend money on new campaign ads at all. I'd just run that over and over again. Biden talked about stabilizing the Middle East, uniting Europe, and being strong against Russia. Biden is failing on all those topics. In contrast, look at what President Trump did with the Abraham Accords, tough and consistent policies with Russia, and, as another example, keeping America safe from terrorists by having a strong, secure southern border. Biden's failures are obvious, but when you watch an interview like the one produced by 60 Minutes, you'd never know. All right, next let's talk about campus reaction to the Hamas terrorist attacks. But first, if you're new to the show or haven't subscribed yet, regardless of platform, Just search out my name, hit that subscribe button, make sure notifications are turned on. That way you can follow the show and help us grow. Okay, next let's talk about the campus protests that erupted last week and which are still occurring now on college campuses across the country. As you know, many of the so-called elite colleges and universities in America 
are just mouthpieces for the left. Conservative voices are routinely silenced. Republican clubs have a hard time just existing on campus. Conservative speakers are canceled because the left says that conservatives spout off hate speech that could lead to actual violence. But just look at what is happening now. You are seeing pro-Hamas, not simply pro-Palestinian, but pro-Hamas rallies. Hamas is a terrorist organization that just killed 1,300 innocent Israelis in some of the most barbaric ways imaginable. And these students are marching for those terrorists. If you are marching and chanting for terrorists, isn't that hate speech? Couldn't that lead to more actual violence? I was in New York this weekend on Newsmax. And one of our panel discussions was on this very topic. Here's Sam Rutzik from the organization Campus Reform with some observations. You know, I give a lot of leeway for college students to be pretty stupid, but this was astonishing, uh, even given that, you know, the amount of anti-Semitism that bubbled to the surface the instant there was an excuse. This wasn't criticism of Israel or criticism of Likud or criticism of Netanyahu. This was rejoicing in the sort of cold-blooded slaughter of Jewish mm. children. Another guest on the program was Zachary Marshall, also with Campus Reform, who accurately made the connection between these pro-Hamas rallies and other leftist movements. Um, Cornell University is in Ithaca, New York, which is only 90 minutes north of Binghamton. The uh, one picture of, uh, your viewers can look at to understand what's happening on college campuses is the headshot of Darren Borders, who is a DEI officer at Cornell, who is now in hot water because he put out a pro-Hamas statement. He has a Black Lives Matter and a Progress Flat lapel pins in his headshot. This is a coordinated effort among faculty and among students over the last two generations in higher education to use intersectionality and leftist ideologies like anti-racism and social justice mm. to peddle their anti-Semitism in polite society. What we are seeing is not some new rise in anti-Semitism. It's been there, and the left embraces it. The Hamas terrorist attacks were a very visible event to get those sentiments to boil over into the public. As soon as the attacks occurred, left-wing students and faculty were on the march. Some professors embraced Hamas. Other schools were slow to denounce the attacks. Make no mistake, one of the prime objectives of Marxist ideology is to bring down the West. And in the Middle East, Israel is a representation of the West, BLM. Transgenderism, child grooming, pro-terrorist, anti-Semitic, it's all rolled in together with today's far left. Donors to these large schools need to realize that colleges are no longer in the business of education. Indoctrination has become the sole focus, and it will not change unless there is major pushback. All right, next, Kamala Harris recently per participated in the Fight for Our Freedoms college tour. And she showed once again that the reason some Democrats still support Joe Biden is that they are scared to death that if he's out of the picture, the party might be stuck with Harris. Here's Kamala Harris talking about diversity and its effects on America. It is very clear diversity actually makes us stronger, both in terms of who we are socially and societally, but it also makes our economy stronger mm -hmm. when we pay attention to these issues. Mm -hmm. Well, that was a whole lot of nothing. The key to American greatness is that we actually have an American culture. You can come from any other place on the planet and become an American. In no other country can that happen. But the Marxist multicultural movement has nothing to do with embracing the positive aspects of other societies. Instead, it's all about tearing down American society and culture and replacing it with division. In other parts of Harris's conversation, she, of course, had to tell the audience about her love of Venn diagrams. So here's, here's I think at this point, a well-known secret about me. I, I love Venn diagrams. I love Venn diagrams. And whenever I am presented with kind of like, this is complicated, I'm, I always wonder, is there a Venn diagram to figure this stuff out? And we love that about you. Right? Something is just not right with her. In an attempt to be inspirational, Harris talked about not just talking, taking no for an answer, Fine, but it came out like this. Don't hear no. I eat no for breakfast. Don't hear no. <laughs> Always believe in what can be, unburdened by what has been. What? But if you think that was an example of Harris's textbook laugh, which just comes out of the blue for no reason, 
Well, that was just a warm up. When someone in the audience referred to Harris's lineup, we did it, Joe. Then she really broke loose. We did it, Joe. <laughs> We did it. <laughs> wow. What can you even say? She's nuts. And she's America's vice president. She's also Joe Biden's golden ticket for staying on the ballot. So who do you think's worse, Biden or Harris? Let me know in the comments. Okay. Next here are some rapid fire headlines from around the country. DC Judge Tanya Chutkin, originally appointed by Barack Obama, has issued a gag order on former President Trump regarding the January 6th legal case against him. As reported by the Post Millennial, this means Trump will not be legally permitted to make remarks about his case in regard to special counsel Jack Smith, nor court staff or others in the case, including even the prosecution. Trump's lawyers have previously argued the move is a violation of his First Amendment rights and that it runs contrary to established law. All right, and then next, Joe Biden's Health and Human Services Department which has transgender Rachel Levine as the assistant secretary, has instituted a new policy in which employees are required to acknowledge their co-workers' gender identities and use their preferred pronouns. The Post Millennial reports that an email sent out by HHS obtained and posted by the Heritage Foundation's Roger Severino shows the streamlined guidance for HHS. The subject line of the email reads, HHS Gender Non-Discrimination and Inclusion Policy. This all simply means that the federal government is now forcing employees to engage in fantasy world, even if it violates their religious beliefs or common sense. A guy can say he's a woman all day long, but in the end, he's still a guy. Finally, the Gateway Pundit is reporting that conservative talk show host Owen Schroyer's latest appeal has been rejected by DC Judge Tim Kelly. Kelly had sentenced Schroyer to 60 days in jail for his role in the January 6th riot. What did Schroyer do specifically? He stood outside the Capitol and warned Trump supporters not to go inside the building. He's also been a frequent critic of the 2020 election. In other words, Schroyer is going to jail for speech crimes. This is the United States of America. And for speaking out, Schroyer is going to jail. This has to stop. This is getting a, the left is getting a foothold on destroying free speech. And we must not only stop the advancement in its tracks, we must reverse course now. No one in America should feel like he or she is living in China or North Korea. And that's exactly what's happening. Friends, that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. And remember, today's show's one sheet is available to Patreon supporters using the link in the description. The one sheet gives you the links to all the videos and stories used on today's show so you can dive even deeper into each issue. And with that, our next show will be Wednesday evening at the usual time. Until then, I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13 minute news hour. All right, friends, thanks again for tuning in. I really appreciate it. And before you go, please hit that subscribe button above. Once you do, tell your friends, share it, spread the word about the 13 minute news hour so we can keep growing. And for more great content, check out these videos right here and I'll see you next time.